If you're struggling with your vitality, energy, mood, focus, or sleep, this podcast is for you. Your host, Dr. Ann Sung, ER doctor and airspace flight surgeon, will help you reach for the stars and remove the barriers or blockades that have been holding you back from living your best life. If you've been challenged by your health, relationships, or productivity, then it's time for a breakthrough. So here's your host, Dr. Ann Sung. Welcome to It's Not Rocket Science Show, and I am your host, Dr. Ansem. Today, we're going to be talking about what does the NASA flight surgeon actually do when we go to Russia to support the astronauts. And this is part of the educational series I do to kind of teach people about what the aerospace medicine field is about. What does a NASA flight surgeon do? A lot of people don't really know that we actually go to Russia for support. And if you want a detailed uh, journey of how I got here, please go to episode eight, nine, and 10 of what I actually had to do in order to get to the point where I am. So that's a brief summary though. Uh, what is a NASA flight surgeon? Number one, <laughs> what we do is essentially we're the doctor for the astronauts. We help keep them safe so that they're completely optimized so that they're safe to fly to space. We don't actually fly to space ourselves. Uh, we, I get that question a lot because if I am a fl flight surgeon, does that mean that I get to go to space to take care of them? No, we actually take care of them on the ground. We take we get assigned to an astronaut uh, when we're assigned to a mission. There's usually a primary and a uh, deputy crew surgeon who are assigned, and we follow them through training. When they're once they're assigned through training, once they take their flight to International Space Station for six months, we support them on the ground in the NASA Mission Control Center, and then. When they land, we support them through the rehab process. And that's our major role. And then we do also research on the side on any sort of medical issues. We deal with flight rules, et cetera. We have meetings to uh, take a look at the future exploration vehicles and give our medical input. So like the human landing system, Gateway, uh, Orion, all of those programs. So that's a gist of what a NASA flight surgeon actually does. And as part of a contract, if you're a contractor, we get sent to Russia once a year for about two to three months at a time to support uh, astronaut training. And if you're a civil servant with NASA, you don't go to Russia, but since I am a contractor, I've gone to Russia twice and just got back. Uh, and the reason why we go there is number one, the US astronauts go there to train with the Russians on their Russian systems because International Space Station, I mean, it's comprised of multiple modules uh, made up by European, Space Agency, Japanese Space Agency, Russian Space Agency. So in case of emergencies or the US astronauts need to know the systems really well and they need to actually learn Russian. So they go to Russia because the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center is in Star City. It is about an hour drive from Moscow. If there's no traffic, if there's traffic, it can be like two to three hour drive. And many crew go that way. When I say crew, I mean the astronauts. They go there for training. And as the doctor, there sometimes are hazardous training, like say if they're pressurized in a suit in the mock-ups or maybe a winter survival training or a water training, that you're the doctor for them. And especially, you know, with COVID lately, you are the doctor to make sure that, you know, you do the testing that's reasonable. You make sure everyone is safe, uh, quarantine if needed, any sort of sanitation practices or health practices, you're there to make sure that they are enforced and to draft the guidelines if needed. And you are the physician also for all the NASA support personnel who are there in Star City. And I, I wanted to let you guys know that there are actually two physicians in Russia. One of them is in Moscow, and he or she is stationed there for the whole year. Typically, it's a year-long contract or two-year contract. And and then there is the physician to go to Star City, which is who my, what my job is. And the person who's hired on long-term in Moscow usually is the primary person to assess the epidemiology of uh, disease like COVID in Russia as a whole. We'll give a report on that. And also to coordinate any sort of evacuation or any sort of medical needs. And they're kind of like the overarching lead in Russia, medical lead in Russia. And so when I go there to Star City, I am responsible for the other NASA personnel. There's somebody called Director of Operations of Russia, who's usually an astronaut. 
there's a deputy director, there may be other support personnel around there from NASA. And if anybody gets sick, I am responsible for them and I'm the doctor for them. And the second thing I do is I maintain the inventory in the medical office. We have a medical office with supplies uh, and also uh, for launch and landing packs too with supplies. So I'm in charge to make sure all of the equipment are up to date, nothing is expired to order the inventory ahead of time so that, because it, it does take a few months lead time to get to Star City. So I need to make sure everything is up to date, that I have enough medication for both treating the, if there are any patients in Star City, vaccines, and for launches and landing coming up, you know, in six months, uh, sometimes we plan and we order things um, seven or eight months ahead of time. So it's a lot of uh, logistics, essentially. And to maintain the launch and landing medical pack, we have medical pack we take. And that's another thing a lot of people are not familiar with. Um, the US crew, uh, we have been riding on the Soyuz rocket from uh, the Kazakhstan. We would launch and land there. And that's a reason why a lot of the flight surgeons go there for launch and landing support. And that's a reason why the medical packs are in Star City because uh, my one of our jobs is to maintain the medical packs and make sure they're ready. Then the prime or, and deputy crew surgeons will come, take the packs. There's also launch and landing supplement packs and take them to Kazakhstan. And then after launches and landing, they go back to Houston and then the packs come back to us and we make sure that they're ready to go. They're repacked again. Everything works, checking the battery, diagnostics, nothing is expired, medications, et cetera, et cetera. That's one of the most important jobs for us to make sure that launch and landing goes smoothly. and if in case there is a chance that they, uh, there's an emergency on International Space Station and they actually have to deorbit early, what that means basically they have to take the Soyuz and come back early, then a lot of times we are in charge of going there to support launch and landing because we're the closest ones there. So that's like a, a gist of our roles and responsibilities. And next I'd like to talk about you know, what we actually do day to day when we're in Star City. So I mentioned that we support astronaut training. And so, you know, every week we have meetings uh, with NASA, uh, like back in Houston. And we also uh, get the schedule of the astronaut training. We kind of plan out ahead of time, what is hazardous, which event needs a, a physician. And we make sure that if it's a new crew member who's never been here, new astronaut, um, if it's something medical, then we like a medical education type, like on the rush to medical pack or their medical system, then we either go with them, we explain it to them, et cetera, and really any questions that they have. And so those are the main things. We make sure that they're supported throughout their training, answer anything that they have, and to kind of predict ahead of time what they may need. And if something happens, you will coordinate with their primary surgeon or their deputy surgeon. And also, you make sure there's a medical fridge. You have to make sure that the uh, temperature is all good. You take a look at the inventory. I've done surrounding hospital reviews to make sure I know what capabilities they have so that in case of emergencies, or maybe it's not something urgent, I know where to go, which hospitals to go. And you coordinate, you, you build relationships with the, our Russian staff who works for NASA there. They're, the NASA hired a group called TTI. So essentially it's a Russian group who uh, acts as our liaison between us and also GCTC and the Russian uh, Space Agency. And they really help us out with logistics, with training, with inter like interpretation as well. Um, and we also learn Russian when we're there. Uh, so we take Russian classes three times a week. And it's a, uh, it's a really unique job because like I said, the day-to-day really you're, you're the closest with the astronauts when you're there because usually after their training Monday through Friday we have potlucks every now and then and people cook or you know go to the store and buy things and uh, once or twice a week sometimes every day people want to make fires or they want to get together in one of the cottages and then you have a potluck together and those few hours you really get to know people there and you spend quality time, face-to-face -face time, being present with them. And it's really, really rare in Houston working at Johnson Space Center because now everything is remote. You don't get that face-to-face -face time. You don't get the feeling where you're kind of living and working together. So it's, it's a really, really special time. 
and a little bit about the the life in Star City. So you when you travel there, you take a flight to Moscow, then they have drivers too that arrange a, a, a ride for you to go to Star City, uh, GCTC. GC, Star City is a secure area. You actually have to get a badge. There's other, it used to be a military base, but now there are non-military people there now. You have to do though, you have to badge in and out. There's a gate and the NASA created uh, a few cottages. There are six cottages. They're kind of like duplexes for the astronauts to stay and director operations to stay. And then there's the NASA office right next to it. It's called Prophylactorium. And there's multiple floors. The first floor is the Russian. The second floor is our floor. Third floor is the European Space Agency floor. And so as a flight surgeon, I stay on the second floor in the Prophylactorium. And if you want to see more of what the video, what life is like, if you just go to my Instagram at AnsungMD and you'll see, or my Facebook, you'll see videos of what it's like inside the office and what it's like in the one bedroom suite that I get to stay in. Um, the photos of the videos of the medical office, et cetera, et cetera. And the grounds of Star City as well. So uh, you get to stay there and it's really cool just because you also have a balcony. And then you, if you step out, then you're basically at the office at, at work and you just walk down the hallway, you're at the medical office already. So, you know, you really get to build relationships with the Russian staff when you're there because they, you know, their work day, just so you know, it's nine to six and you're so close. Sometimes like during the winter, you, you feel like you're really glad you don't have to like walk a bunch through the snow, through the ice just to get to work. And so that's where you would stay. There is a common kitchen, shared kitchen that you can cook all your meals from. There are a lot of supplies there. And then you can also, since you're, the schedule is kind of flexible as well, because sometimes we go on meetings with, uh, in Houston and sometimes we work at, until nighttime. Uh, it's not just for us. It's not just nine to six. You're very flexible in terms of like when you can go to the gym. We have a really nice gym underground, one of the cottages that we get to use. Uh, when the crew is not using it. And so you get to schedule that into your day and um, you get to basically kind of structure your day based on the meetings that you have, based on the crew schedule that you have. And Star City itself, there are a lot of apartment high-rise buildings that are built in the 60s. And there's a lake right outside that you can take a walk around that freezes over. There are ducks, there's locals walking around. There are two grocery stores, really one that's close to us though. There's maybe one restaurant. So we cook a lot when we're there. On the weekends, we have a trip to Globus, which is like their super Walmart or Costco maybe. Um, but it's more like a super Walmart, I would say, or super Target. And we get everything that we need there every week. Um, so that's really nice. And uh, on the weekends, you can spend time reading. There's a DVD movie collection you can watch, uh, working out. Or sometimes we have trips to Moscow. Sometimes the crew likes to go to Moscow and sometimes we go with them. You can take the train. You, sometimes you can take a, uh, if the driver's free, you can take a ride with them. And there's also the flea market. There's a mile of a market next to uh, close by Moscow. Sometimes people go there on the weekend. So it's a really fun time and you learn a lot about operations. You get to spend time with the people at NASA, with the astronauts. And you get to learn the Russian culture, the language, explore Moscow, explore Star City. I would say Moscow is like a crazy busy, like New York, essentially like a huge city um, and very fast paced. And then I spent a weekend there and I came back to Star City and I was feeling like a sigh of relief. Like it was so calm, quaint and so peaceful. I loved it. <laughs> So it's a, it's a big difference uh, depending on where, what city you're in. So that's essentially the gist of what a NASA flight surgeon actually do in Russia. I hope that was educational for you. If you are uh, just learning about this at all, or if you're a medical student, a resident, or you, uh, an attending physician um, interested in aerospace medicine, yes, please go to episode eight, nine, and 10. I will detail what I did when I was up to you know, the time when I was a medical student, a resident, my fellowship, my aerospace medicine fellowship, um, some of the opportunities um, that, that are coming up right now with commercial space companies ramping up and with us going to the moon in the mid-2020s. I mean, there's so many opportunities and 
we need more flight surgeons. So please go listen to those episodes. If you have any questions, you can go to it's not rocket science show.com. The show notes are there. There's going to be resource links there. And just you can also contact me there or find me on Instagram, find me on Facebook at Ansung MD, and I will respond to you whatever questions you have. And I would say the first thing to do is the there's uh, aerospace medicine fellowships at University of Texas Medical Branch in Galveston, which is what I did. And then there's also the one in Mayo, and then there are also the military ones. So if you're interested in that, go to those websites, check it out. And I uh, really thank you for your time and attention for the today. And just remember that everything we need is within us now. Thank you. That's it for today's episode. Head on over to iTunes and subscribe to the show. One lucky listener every single week that posts a review in iTunes will win a chance in the grand prize drawing to win a private VIP day for a health and life makeover with Dr. Ann Sung herself. Then be sure to head on over to it's not rocket science show.com and pick up your free gift from Dr. Sung. Then join us on the next episode.